Welcome back to Pillow Talk. This is Kevin Fear. Pillow Talk is a show about sleep. I am the president and CEO of Mattress Express, a chain of luxury, innovative bedding stores. If you're listening to this on the radio in a town where we don't have stores, uh, you can call 1-800-NEW-BEDS during normal business hours, and uh, we can give you more information. We are a short drive from you. Believe me, people in your town are driving to central and northern New York, in Utica, to buy our products um, and look at what we have, because we have such a diverse offering of products. We have the number bed by instant comfort, the number bed by personal comfort. We have Posh and Lavish, which is an ultra luxury flex head bed. We have uh, Eclipse Hotel Quality Bedding, which is an, a whole line of bedding. We have a spinal zone, which is an extra support system for the back. We have Purple, we have Puppy. It goes on and on and on. We're not your average mattress store. And I'm here on this show to tell you a little bit about my stories, but to also help you get a better night's sleep. If you can take one thing away from this show that helps you get a better night's sleep, that improves your life. I have a simple theory in life. If I can do something to change someone else's life and it has no effect on my life, why wouldn't I do it? And I use that in all facets of life. Uh, when I meet someone, with, if it's an employee, if it's a customer, if it's somebody I run into on the street, if I can change your life through an action on my part or a giving on my part or a sharing on my part, and it has no effect on my life, why wouldn't I do it? Even if it has an effect on my life, I have to measure uh, what effect that has and, and you know, why wouldn't I do it? I just, I think it helps me be a better person. And I think it, if everybody did a little more of that, it'd be a better world. So I'm going to continue this segment about myths about sleep. We did, we talked about this in a previous segment. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just fight, getting over being sick. And uh, there was so much material here, I wasn't able to uh, really go completely through it. So I'm going to continue another segment on myths about sleep. Because I think there's so many preconceived notions we have, and sleep affects your whole life. You spend a third of your life sleeping. They say the average person sleeps seven to nine hours. Well, there's only 24 hours in a day. That's a third of your life. It affects everything you do in your life. So here's another myth. Adults sleep more with age. Older adults frequently sleep less than younger people. Aging can affect a person's cardiac rhythm and make it harder for them to sleep as long as they want. Interesting. You know, I'm getting a little bit older. I'm in my mid-50s. I don't know how that happened. I spent my 40s wondering where my 30s went, and here I am in my mid-50s. And my body's changing, and I don't always like how it changes, but it's changing. And uh, if you're with me, you, you know what I'm talking about. And um, sleep becomes more and more important, being comfortable. I have a good friend of mine who's a dentist, and he always says, I just want to be comfortable. <laughs> Everything we do, I just want to be comfortable. Uh, the ability to fall asleep anywhere at any time means you're a good sleeper. That's a myth. Being able to fall asleep at any time under any circumstances is a sign of having sleep problems. Not being a good sleeper makes sense. I can't fall asleep anywhere at any time. You're probably overtired if that's what you're doing and you're not getting a good night's sleep. Um, yeah, you know, it's a no-brainer. I have couples that come in and look at beds all the time and and... 85% of the time, the man says, I can sleep on anything. As long as she's comfortable, I can sleep on the floor. It's usually not true. They say that. And when you start putting them on beds, you know how men are. I'm a man, you know. I can sleep anywhere. But really, you want to be comfortable. Another myth. Napping makes up for lack of sleep at night. That's a myth. While a quick nap can provide a boost of energy, it is not a substitute for quality sleep at night especially because it does not involve moving through the stages of sleep in the same way as during nightly sleep. When you sleep, you move through different stages. You've got REM sleep, that's rapid eye movement where your eyes are darting all over. A quick nap is just an energy boost. It does not substitute sleep, according to this article by the National Sleep Foundation. Again, much to your surprise, you may not realize this, I'm not a medical doctor. I share with you my experiences in the bedding industry and the research I do. Take it for what it's worth. <clears throat> Again, just getting over being sick, bear with me. Myth, 
Teens do not sleep enough only because they choose to stay up late. Myth. A significant number of teenagers, including up to 72% of high school students, get less than, less than the recommended amount of sleep. In many cases, this is because their sleep schedule involves staying up late into the night. However, this night owl tendency isn't simply a matter of choice. Instead, it's a reflection of biological changes that started around puberty and pushed the circadian uh, rhythm of adolescence back by around two hours. But their body's changing. Just like us getting older, our body's changing. And it affects your sleep and your sleep patterns. You need to be aware of that. You need to make changes necessary to get a great night's sleep. You know how important it is for kids. I've got kids of that age running around my life, and it's important. And yeah, they stay up late. Another myth, turning up the radio, opening the window, or turning on the air conditioner are effective ways to stay awake when driving. Now, I'll tell you a great story. When I was younger, much, much younger, I had this dream of owning a bar. Let me tell you something about owning a bar. I couldn't wait to get in the bar business, and I couldn't wait to get out. But nevertheless, I owned a chain of insurance agencies. I was in my early 20s, and I, I bought a bar in Oswego, and I would leave to drive from Syracuse to Watertown, open my insurance agency work all day. On a Friday night, I would leave there at five o'clock. I would drive to Oswego and I would work at this bar till two in the morning and then I would drive home. So I'm going on 20 hours. And I remember one night coming home and I could not keep my eyes open. And it was winter. And I rolled the windows down in the car and I turned the radio all the way up and uh, I kept falling asleep. There was nothing I could do to stay awake. By God's grace, I made it home safely that night. Drowsy driving is extremely dangerous, and these tricks are ineffective and especially worrisome if they keep a sleepy driver behind the wheel. Yeah, there's nothing you can do to stay awake. If you're feeling tired while driving, the best and safest thing to do is pull off the road into a safe area where you can nap to 15 or 30 minutes or stop for the night. I should have done that that night. That was 30 years ago, but it's the truth because I've experienced it. I'm sure all of you have. So just think, if you don't get a great night's sleep, you may not fall asleep at the wheel, but it affects your reaction time. It affects how you drive. It's important. Myth, if you can't sleep, <clears throat> it's best to stay in bed until you fall back to sleep. That's a myth. Sleep experts recommend getting out of bed if you can't fall asleep. Within 20 minutes, instead of tossing and turning in bed, it's better to get up and do something relaxing in a quiet, dim setting without using your cell phone or other electronic devices, and then try to go back to bed. Get up and relax a little. In dim settings, calm down a little bit and go back to bed. Another myth, alcohol before bed can improve your sleep. A drink or two can be relaxing, according to this article from the National Sleep Foundation, including drowsiness that makes it easier to initially fall asleep. The problem is that the quality of sleep declines considerably after drinking alcohol. Very interesting. Another myth, a warmer bedroom is best for sleeping. I don't know. I like to sleep in a cool bedroom. I like to be warm, but cool, have the air cool. Although a warm bedroom might feel cozier, studies indicate that it's not ideal for sleep. Body temperature drops naturally as part of physical, the physical process of sleep. And a bedroom that's too hot may disrupt that process. Yeah, you know when you fall asleep, your body temperature goes down. Uh, this is a good one. Myth. Hitting the snooze button provides meaningful extra rest. We all want to believe that, right? Just five more minutes, please. The snooze bar can provide what seems like precious minutes. I just laughed because I did. Precious minutes to keep sleeping between alarms. But this time is unlikely to offer meaningful rest. Fragmented sleep is generally not restorative. So you shouldn't count on hitting the snooze to help you wake up more refreshed. Yeah, I think that's, we all know that, but we don't want to admit it. Folks, it's all about getting a great night's sleep. When you're looking for your next sleep system, uh, just give us a try. Come to Mattress Express. See if we got what you like. Take a look. Find out what a flex head bed is. Find out what a number bed by Instant Comfort is all about. Find out what the purple grid is all about. Find out what the purple puffy hybrid is all about. Check out our Eclipse Hotel quality bedding with the spinals, and we have great stuff. It's not the stuff you find everywhere. You can call 1-800-NEW-BEDS. You can go to mattressexpressny.com. You can visit any store without appointment. Questions, compliments, even criticisms, but don't try to sell me something. Go to Pillow Talk.
question at gmail.com. Hey, we're going to be right back after these breaks. This is Kevin Fear at Pillow Talk.